Welcome to the University of Washington Tracheotomy Care Training video, module describing the basics of tracheotomy. By the end of this video, you will be able to explain what a tracheotomy is using proper terminology, explain other related and important terms, understand common reasons for performing a tracheotomy, understand the basic changes in function after a tracheotomy. We'll start with some basic definitions. A tracheotomy is actually an incision in the trachea, or windpipe. It comes from two Greek words, the root, tom, meaning to cut, and the word trachea, referring to the windpipe. Closely related is the term tracheostomy. This is a permanent or semi-permanent opening created from the outside into the windpipe. This is derived from the root stome, which means mouth. Both terms refer to a small opening in the neck to create a new path for air to get into the windpipe. Because of this, the terms are often used interchangeably by many people. The normal upper airway starts at the nose and mouth. It connects in the back of the throat or pharynx and goes down through the larynx or voice box. Below the larynx, air passes to the trachea and to the lungs. A tracheotomy is typically placed about an inch below the lowest cartilage of the larynx called the cricoid. A tracheotomy appliance, commonly called a trach tube, is placed through the hole and a cuff or balloon at the lower end of the trach tube may be inflated to seal the airway around the trach tube and force air to go into the lungs when the trach tube is hooked up to a ventilator. When the cuff is not inflated, Air may pass around the trach tube and may even pass to the upper airway and out of the mouth. This can allow a patient to speak when a trach tube is in place, as long as there is enough space around the trach tube and in the upper airway for air to pass. There are several reasons for performing a tracheotomy. Sometimes there is more than one indication at a time. The most common reason is to allow for long-term ventilation. This is usually in the setting of a critically ill patient in the intensive care unit who requires mechanical ventilation from a ventilator for a long period of time. The purpose of this is to avoid the discomfort and potential for injury associated with a tube that crosses the larynx and rests against these tissues for a long period of time. Another advantage is that it decreases the distance that air needs to travel from the outside world into the lungs, which can help very weak patients breathe more easily and possibly wean more easily from the ventilator. While the ICU is the most common setting for long-term ventilation, it is also seen in patients with chronic neuromuscular disorders like muscular dystrophy and spinal cord injury. In these cases, the cuff may be left deflated to allow the patient to speak more easily or swallow if they are otherwise able. Upper airway obstruction is another common indication. In this instance, the tracheotomy is done to bypass the obstruction that may be preventing adequate air from reaching the lungs. Causes of obstruction that are seen most often include large tumors, severe scarring, or bilateral vocal fold paralysis. Additionally, Patients with severe obstructive sleep apnea may be treated with a tracheotomy. Finally, a tracheotomy may be performed for pulmonary hygiene. It can allow ready access for suctioning or bronchoscopy for patients with swallowing problems, excess lung mucus, or who don't have enough strength in their chest muscles to easily cough up secretions in their lungs. This most commonly occurs with a chronic illness that involves the muscular or nervous systems. A number of changes occur after a tracheotomy, so a period of adjustment is often necessary. The first change is that air bypasses the nose. Ordinarily, a function of the nose is to warm and humidify air as it passes to the lungs. Because this function is lost, there is a need for an alternative means of humidification to avoid dryness which can lead to discomfort and a buildup of dry secretions. The most common source of humidification is a high humidity mist mask. However, there are alternatives including a heat and moisture exchange filter that can be placed on the trach tube. 
Also, as a result of air bypassing the nose, smell and taste are often impaired, and patients often experience a runny nose since nasal mucus is no longer easily drawn to the throat as it was before. A tracheotomy may also impair swallowing, although typically not severely. It can impair swallowing by preventing the larynx from rising during the swallow. The second way it affects swallowing is by changing the pressure inside and outside the throat. It can also put pressure on the esophagus and make it difficult for food to pass through, usually more significantly if the cuff is inflated. Voice can be affected by a tracheotomy. When the cuff is inflated, the patient will be unable to talk because no air passes through the larynx or voice box. If the cuff is deflated, a patient can often talk as they breathe out, but this depends on how much space there is around the tube. This is discussed in greater detail in a subsequent module. The final change to expect is that there is often a psychological component of adapting to this change. A long-term tracheotomy is associated with a change in lifestyle and appearance and can also affect the lives of loved ones. Although people can learn to cope with this, and in many cases it can even be a positive change compared to the difficulty of breathing beforehand, it is important to recognize this to help patients and caregivers cope. Support groups are available to connect with other people who have been through similar situations. One aspect that frequently gets confused among even medical professionals is the difference between a tracheotomy and a laryngectomy. Tracheotomy is discussed in detail above. A laryngectomy is a completely different procedure that also results in breathing through the neck. In the case of laryngectomy, the entire larynx is removed and the trachea is sewn to the skin to create a secure passageway that allows air to pass through. This is usually done for laryngeal cancer, although there may be other indications. This distinction is extremely important for two reasons. First, the opening in a laryngectomy patient is typically more permanent, so a tube is not always necessary. And if there is a tube, it can usually safely be removed by the patient or nurse. This is usually not the case with a standard tracheotomy, in which the hole may close if the tube is removed. Second, and even more critical, a patient with a total laryngectomy has no connection between their nose or mouth and lower airway. The hole in the neck is the only airway access and in most cases, the easiest possible airway. As a result, a laryngectomy patient can never be intubated from above as the tube will pass directly into the esophagus. In contrast, in a routine tracheotomy, particularly in the absence of upper airway obstruction, the tracheal airway can be accessed both through the neck and through the nose or mouth in an emergency situation. It is critically important to make this distinction in every patient so there is no confusion in an emergency situation. In this module, we describe tracheotomy, including definitions, reasons for the procedure, and what changes to expect afterwards.